Now I'm going to derive the Lorentz transformation for time using uh, time dilation uh, and the desynchronization of time I call it dt. d dot t dot is um, v l naught over c squared divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Okay. And how we do this is we have our, our little our, our frames, our not prime frame, our prime reference frame and our event again like we did for the length contraction um, except this time <clears throat> instead of looking at position coordinates we're looking at time coordinates so we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, time as a uh, a coordinate as a fourth dimension because every every place has a, a time coordinate um, than just something that just everybody records okay so what happens is this person we're going to look at the perspective of this person okay in our, our time dilation equation, we have delta t, which is the time for the person who's observing. In this case, it's going to be this person. It's going to be t prime, the time that he records. Delta t naught is the time that goes by for the other reference frame, and the square root of 1 minus v squared of c squared, of course, is, uh, or 1 over that is the Lorentz factor. So, let's look at this. Um, if this person sees this happening at a position over here, all right? Um, and they will see a time coordinate uh, for that position. They could see, like, if there was a clock there, that would be that would be its time coordinate. What it was recording would be the uh, the time coordinate. <clears throat> um, the problem is that in this person's uh, in the not primed actual reference frame, uh, there's only one time that's going by. This person in the prime reference frame sees a desynchronization in the not prime reference frame, like this, due to differences in the distance from here to here. It's as if this were a train. Okay. That was moving in this direction from this person's perspective. From the prime perspective, um, he would be seeing uh, the person in the not prime frame and the event moving to the left. Okay. So the time for this coordinate over here would be synchronized from the time from the origin, uh, the origin time coordinate where it's actually being recorded by a certain amount. Remember the light waves would be going out like this and they'd be going out and caught up over here. So what this person actually has to do is the T prime that they see will equal the time coordinate over here which can be represented as the time that he sees that occur at over the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared as if there was a clock there minus the desynchronization, which would be v. Now l naught is x, because that that's the distance in this person's reference frame, divided by c squared all over the square root of one minus v squared over c squared. This person has to subtract the desynchronization from this time coordinate to get the actual time coordinate for this frame to convert from um, time coordinates in the not prime frame to the time coordinates in the time prime frame. So we get t prime equals t minus vx over c squared over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And this is the main Lorentz transformation. Also, t prime equals t minus vx over c squared times gamma. Um, that's the main uh, Lorentz transformation. Uh, the other one would be, and that, and that was relatively simple, that's just, you know, Accounting for the desynchronization that this person sees, like like we did in our, our train thought experiment, but um, to do the opposite again, what we could just do would be to make the velocity negative, and we would get um, how to convert from prime measurements of time to not prime measurements of time. Oops. But I will I'll show you how that's done now anyway. Um, okay, so, so we had our event over here, all right? Now, what happens is, with this perspective, if delta t is t, <coughs> then he's seeing the time coordinate again, as if this could drop down to a clock over here, um, that is in this person's reference frame. It's again, like the, the length, uh, coordinate that was measured, the, the x prime coordinate, the coordinate what, that was measured was just the distance in this person's reference frame. This is a time coordinate in this person's reference frame. And this person would see a desynchronization as this moves um, from that coordinate to 
this coordinate as if this was a train now moving in this direction so the light waves wouldn't catch up to this one as quickly and would hit this one first. So what they have to do is they have to say t equals the time coordinate they see the t prime coordinate over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So that's actual time coordinate that happens in this person's reference frame because now it's in this reference frame. Uh, it's in the prime reference frame versus the not prime reference frame minus the desynchronization which would be because, uh, no, sorry, it would be plus the desynchronization because you'd have to get from this one <coughs> to the origin time, uh, uh, time, origin time for the prime reference frame. So you'd have to add v. This time, L naught would be x prime over c squared because it's again in the prime reference frame over the square root of one minus v squared over c squared. So t equals t prime plus v x over c squared over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. If you're converting from prime measurements to not prime measurements, and this is the Lorentz transformation for time. Again, uh, it's kind of difficult to visualize this, but um, <coughs> I'll just I'll draw it again quickly here. You have your clock, and it would be moving in this direction over here, and this these waves would hit this one first and hit this one later. Um, but I'll do more mathematical derivation in a another video if this didn't work for you. I like this. I think it's smart and a good way to think about it. So yeah, this is the Lorentz transformation for time. Thank you.